we're starting to unpick the mysteries of the site. I think um, at the moment it's still posing as questions, uh, but I'm confident that we're going to be able to answer those questions uh, within the next couple of days with a bit of uh, strong arms and intensive digging. John, I believe you made a wee find, is that right? A wee bit of flint, that's all that's come up. Worked flint? Nah, by the looks of it. All right. It's really a tidy up here we're doing at the moment so as this square can get its picture taken and showing up the different colours of soil which will tell our archaeologists something of the story of the site, we hope. What we have here is a post hole, that is to say we see the stone packing that was used to hold a post in place. Possibly another one over there, just near uh, John's feet. Um, we don't know what this post was for, whether it's part of a structure or, or whether it's part of a ceremonial gateway or something of that nature. Um, but it, is, it does need to be built on top of this, this bank. Yeah. Well, we nearly, nearly got down to the bottom here. Just need to take this corner out and we'll be in the, the bottom of the ditch, more or less. It's very, very happy. I'm having lots of lots of good fun on site. The weather's got a lot better this week, which is fantastic. Um, we've had people travel all the way down from Glasgow to come and take part in the excavations, which is great as well. Uh, so all in all, I think a tremendous success at the moment. Slowly, slowly scrape it down with the trowel and then draw it over the top with a new piece of paper so we can see what's happening in the meantime. Ed, can I watch your, watch your feet as you're going and that sort of way? There's rare bits and pieces kind of scattered about. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm wondering about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you that once in a BBC thing. The gentleman has a job. Right, these are the pots the children were making in the workshops prior to the Scalp Sea event. And then on the day, June the 18th, we had a kiln built down on the shore, and these are all fired in a very traditional fashion on the shore, uh, just in a wood fired kiln. They've looked at pictures of the, um, the earlier finds that have been made on the island of the decoration, and they've worked with that as ideas, so it's, it's quite curious to see what they've come up with. Hi, I'll just get the wagon. I'm not sure if that was. That was one of the ones at the castle. Bang, that's amazing. And he planted all these trees here as well. And they all took all the trees. We wanted to look at this bit on the outside to see if that represented an older bank. As we started, so we end, and that the rain is coming down on us. So uh, um, it's been a fantastic. Uh, well, just short of three weeks where we are just now. It's been a fantastic uh, time on the dig. Uh, lots of very interested people. Uh, lots of very enthusiastic support from people who live here, who are visiting here, um, who might never have come to Butte before, but were quite delighted to see an archaeological excavation, understand an archaeological excavation. So, um, I think in terms of what we've achieved here, for the sort of the, the the wider aims, if you like, of undertaking the excavation, in terms of kind of getting people out and about and interested in archaeology and the archaeology and heritage of Butte, um, then we've we've more than exceeded what I'd hoped for in terms of. Uh, in those terms. So, um, in terms of the excavation itself, I think we are. Uh, I'm very happy with it. I suspect some of the people that have come along to help as out help out with us are a bit more mixed, perhaps, in their views. Uh, having been uh, suggested that they might be digging a prehistoric hen site, or possibly a um, an Iron Age farmstead site, or possibly even a Viking assembly site. Um, we've had remarkable little evidence of anything else apart from uh, the later 18th century modification of this monument. Um, what we've really demonstrated through archaeology is that all of the, the upstanding remains that you can see that we've tested probably relate to that time when Lord Bannantyne is kind of enhancing and doing up the monument. He's putting in a big dry stone wall round about the exterior. 
um, he's planting trees on it and it looks like he's also done things like cleaned out the ditches and enhanced the banks of the monument as well really to kind of give it a much more impressive look so that when he brings his London visitors out uh, after their dinner party in the castle to have a look at the archaeological monument on his land or one of them on his land then uh, they would be suitably impressed by the size and scale of it. So. For me, it's all been it's all been very positive. It's been a, an excavation full of positives in terms of numbers, in terms of people that come to visit, people who help participate, and in terms of what we've understood for the archaeology. But uh, I suspect if you ask a couple of the volunteers, there might be a slight tinge of disappointment that the horned helmet of Ragnar didn't turn up on site. But that's archaeology.